previously on The Greatest Trek. We have planned an unplanned trek. We wanted to fly into Ho Chi Minh City, buy a couple of motorbikes off the black market and ride them across the country for four weeks ending in Hanoi. So far everything has gone to plan. We arrived, traded US dollars for a couple of hogs from fellow backpackers who even threw in a bonus riding lesson. We then made our first epic ride. 38 kilometers to the historical town of Kuchi, where we crawled around in tunnels preserved from the Vietnam War and also got to fire some AK-47s at a firing range. But now our trip really begins. It's day six and our next port of call is over 200 kilometers away, deep in the country's central highlands in a town called Dalat. I don't even know if you can see us, but it's day six of the greatest trek, and we're off to 200 kilometers to Dalat, starting in this uh, this mega motorway, and it's going to be like this all the way down. So it's going to be another uh, hard day of riding, a long day of ridiculous horns, and it's it's 10 a.m. But the sun's already just coming down, so we've just we've just got some sun cream and. Uh, it's gonna be a long day again, but it should be should be still good. As we drove out from the truck stop town we called home the previous night, we've begun to get more confident on the bikes. Although the roads were still treacherous to us amateurs, the traffic on the roads was starting to thin out. The hardest task seemed to be just to concentrate on the road ahead and ignore the everyday life going on on the sides of the road. But after a few hours, we couldn't help but to stop taking this amazing opportunity to talk to and capture the locals who were as excited to see us as we were to see them. So finally, after all those little breakdowns and little uh, delays along the way, we've, uh, we've managed to you know, get some real progress towards Dalat and behind me you'll see some hills which proves that we're starting to get into the central highlands. So that was a little victory for us because so far it's been very flat. Uh, but uh, we seem to be going in the right direction uh, and from what we're told about Dalat it's almost like a little European, you know, countryside, your know, hillside little town, so that's going to be very exciting. Hopefully we'll get there today. We've, got about, we've still got another like four hours of daylight, hopefully we should get there before then. If not, we're probably looking at some night driving, but definitely tonight in Dalat. Definitely tonight in Dalat, Patney said with blind optimism. But with 200 kilometers still to go, we had a hell of a lot of ground still to cover. The most exciting part was what was still ahead. We were finally entering the mountainous region. We were finally out of the Mecca of Ho Chi Minh and in its surroundings. And we were immersing ourselves in the Vietnam we came to see. How fucking amazing! It's 140 kilometers like this. With our tails up and wagging furiously, we found ourselves pulling over time and time again to take in the magnificent views we'd found ourselves emerged in. So we've been riding for a little while and as you can see, just like we were hoping, we're like right in the middle of mountain territory now. These roads are just like snaking through the hillside. Like you don't really get to go for very long before you have to do almost a complete like little hairpin turn. Um, Oh, yeah, hello. the roads have been very good. Hello! And as you can see, the scenery is just unbelievable. Um, with all the gear that we've strapped onto our little hogs, fourth gear has just become a no-go zone. Third gear is like the best gear to get up these hills. We're still over 100 k's from Dalat. Um, we've got another you know, two and a half hours of daylight, so I think we should still get there on time. But if not, there is a little stop somewhere before apparently, so if we have to, we'll just crash there for the night. Two and a half hours of daylight, Mo said. No problems. While everybody else was heading home for the day, we still had kilometers to tick over. So for us, it was full speed ahead. For the next hour, we pushed on as hard as we could, 
maxing out the 100cc of pure hard power on our little Honda Wind. Unfortunately, this took its toll on our hooks as Rwanda, my bike, started to crumble under the pressures and vigor of our MotoGP attacking riding. It's been a real epic day of our uh, riding so far and half hour hour, 80 k's. So we've got 80 kilometers to go and I think the sun's going to, um, the sun will probably go down by the time we get there. So, um, yeah, my engine, the uh, exhaust keeps uh, letting out this like uh, backfiring noise. I don't know. So hopefully we get there. <laughs> Phew. The uncanny part of trying to get to Delat before sundown was that although the map was saying a town existed beforehand, there was no signs that it actually physically existed. I think my engine just said no. No, I will not go any further. And as my bike conged out for the fifth time, we found ourselves thinking that we'd be knocking on the doors of houses in the hillside villages, asking for a bunk to sleep on. But we made the call to keep at it, to ride on into the night as it got darker and darker and darker until finally light at the end of a dark, cold tunnel, sort of. Uh, right, we're, um, we had to call it quits because it just got too dark uh, for riding. We're in a little, uh, Actually, it's just a restaurant, but suddenly the music's gone way louder just as we decided to pull on the camera. We um, we tried to get as close. Well, we were hoping to get to the lot, but because of some old the, the little um, the hiccups we had with the bike, we didn't run behind it. Either. And um, we're only about 30 k's out from the lot, but it got really dark and it got absolutely treacherous out there. Like we couldn't even see where the road was, and we decided, you know, it just wasn't worth risking our next those last 30 k's because you know we'd rather get to the lot peacefully and in, uh, in the daylight than than rush there in the night and maybe you know, get injured or something like that. So we're in the middle of nowhere. We, I still don't actually know. Do you know where we are? No. We don't actually know where we are. About 8 o'clock, we just had dinner. We're really, really tired. So we're going to maybe go look for some water and some snacks and just call it a day. And tomorrow is going to be exciting. We'll reach uh, one of the milestones in the world. I want to do canoeing really bad. Yeah, we're going to do canoeing tomorrow in Delon. So. Canoe opportunities. See you tomorrow. Bye. Good morning, day seven of Operation Vietnam, aka Greatest Trek. Uh, this morning we head to uh, this morning we head to uh, uh, Dalat uh, and our final 30 odd kilometers. Mm -hmm. The 30 we couldn't finish yesterday. It's going to be hopefully a breeze today morning. We get to Dalat, play around a little, have some nice food, uh, spend the night, and then uh, yeah, see what happens. See what happens. Dalat should be exciting though. It's a bit of a unique town in Vietnam. Yeah. Uh, some waterfalls there, a bit of kayaking. Yeah. Um, looking forward to it. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Alright, uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see you in the lot. Two days ago, we left the comfort of a mega city hub in Ho Chi Minh City to ride 200 kilometers to the first pinpoint on our paper map. Now, early in the morning on day seven, that map was a little more crumbled. But our trip was all but becoming a reality. And as we got closer and closer to Delat, excitement was rising as to what would await us. We rode into Delat with the biggest grins on our faces. Our first accomplishment ticked off, and we felt like we were no longer a couple of virgin motorcyclists. That yes, our cherry had finally been popped. Sitting at home looking at a JPEG of Vietnam was easy enough, but to have landed and rode these hogs on our first major voyage was really something. We couldn't wait to see what Delat had in store for us. Cafes, go-go bars, European influenced architecture and smiles. Delat is a swanky progressive town nestled in amongst the central highlands of Vietnam. It has its own style going on, different to anything we had seen so far. 
alighting a five-star golf course and an impressive five-star mansion of a hotel, we found ourselves trying to grasp what purpose Delat actually served. We first went down to the local markets to breathe in some exotic smells and to get a hint of the quality of foods that would probably be served up on our plates later that evening. Delat Central Markets have anything and everything, with it all being local produce, from fresh fish to meat, fruit and veg. If you want fried chicken, you could choose your very own chook. They'd even dice it up right before your eyes. You would, however, have to do the frying part yourself. We seem to be good at the art of attracting street hawkers, keen to sell us any bit of useless junk you could think of. Hey! Five. Fifty. One thing we did need, though, was a new roadmap, after Mo had spent the past few days using our current one as a stress ball. Thank you very much. Yeah, you too, Lynn. We got a map. Cool. Vietnam has a huge coffee culture, and it's not a surprise to find plenty of shops selling the stuff. Most of it is locally cultivated with a French influence. It is all produced by hand, and Delat in particular has a huge market for caffeinated goodness. Another must-have commodity in the way of cheeky snacks is jerky. In particular, deer jerky. We couldn't help but get a sack to complement our ritual end-of-day beverages. Wherever you go in Delat, there's something that will catch your eye. The streets are packed with cultural art, reflecting the rich history of the town. Alright, as so we're walking down this street in search of um, some uh, little nibbles, uh, namely uh, Mr. Chips, uh, and we've come across this little shop here. Uh, it, it looks to be full of paintings, and the, the uh, decor on the outside is just it's really interesting. So we're actually just going to go inside now and check it out. Um, it, it, looks pretty, it looks pretty cool. Inside was walls and walls of paintings. Now, either there's no market in Delat to sell paintings, or the guy's a machine at churning out amazing pieces of art in serious numbers. But the building was chock-a-block full of paintings that looked absolutely incredible. The owner was only too happy to show us around, and it was great to be in from the chaos outside. As the sun sets over Delat, the lights turn on and the city really comes to life. There's plenty of restaurants offering food of all sorts, and ale is easy to come by, as the streets are literally littered with go-go bars and fancy cocktail establishments. One cheeky venue that we just had to visit was the very posh, upmarket, and slightly seedy Envy Bar. With live entertainment and a pricey drink menu, it was the perfect setting to sit back, relax, and soak up the very warming Dalat atmosphere. Envy, my word, what a peculiar minx of entertainment you were. Okay, so that was a rather interesting night at the Cabaret Club. Um, we woke up today just a little bit tired, but um, we're going to go check out some waterfalls. We've acquired a little map of the area, and um, I think we're headed to the best one. It's about 12 kilometers out. So yeah, we're going to hop on our trusty steeds and uh, head on out of there. Delat's a bit more confusing than the roads that we've been taking because, um, you know, so far it's just been straight roads, whereas this time Delat's a bit of a town, so, you know, there is a bit of navigating through the city. But it's got some huge landmarks that are not, you know, hard to miss. Like, there's a massive lake in the middle there. Everything kind of revolves around it. So yeah, we're going to check out these waterfalls. Let's hope they're uh, worth this 12-kilometer round trip. It felt like as soon as we'd parked the bikes, we were back on them. But we weren't heading too far this time. Delat has many a famous waterfalls in the area, and we couldn't wait to see if we'd unearth the ability to properly read a road map using our experiences of the past few days. It was a short ride to get out of Delat, and the country roads were open and easy to ride down. We arrived at what looked to be a waterfall, with an unknown name at that. Woohoo! Okay, so we, uh, we got to the first waterfall, which is the closest one. Turns out it's man-made. It's still pretty cool, but we're, we're looking forward to seeing the actual natural ones, because they're, you know, they're obviously going to be a bit more spectacular. We don't really know what the point of this one is. Um, it just seems to be like a bunch of, you know, 
<laughs> no one really knows. There's no signs or anything. So we don't know if this is like a water treatment plant or if it's just a, a little tourist attraction. But I mean, it's pretty cool. We're gonna head over to the next one. There's three in the area. Uh, there's one that's about two clicks away and there's another one that's about eight. So after the second one, if it's not like up to standard, we might head all the way out and see, you know, whatever's out there. So we're just gonna pretend that we meant to visit and spend time at that unknown waterfall we had just left. But more importantly, we were heading to bigger and better things. As down the road, the Tatanla Falls awaited us. We'd heard impressive stories of grand endure about the place. So we rode right up to the entrance with our tails wagging like a couple of wild hyenas. All right, so here we are, real waterfall at last. I'm glad we, uh, we managed to come down here because uh, this is the real deal. It looks awesome. We're in like a little natural like grotto. It's all gone downhill leading to this point. Um, it's a really cool waterfall and like the surroundings here are like, it almost feels like you're on like a little treasure island set. But um, yeah, and also on the way down, we saw these awesome little rail cars and it looks like that's how people are going back up. So that's going to be really exciting because it snakes up the mountainside from the waterfall back to the top. So yeah, looking forward to doing that and uh, hopefully we'll have some video of that as well. Eight days into the trip and we'd done everything off our own hides. But finally, the Tantala Falls delivers with a free cable car ride back to the car park. But with over 1,900 kilometers still to ride, I sadly don't think it's all going to be this easy. Instead of dreaming up a way to express your name across the world somehow When you told me you were leaving I wasn't thirsty for revenge No, I wasn't disappointed much at all Cause you'll be back up 